to make some, something really ugly, I'm going to call that entry <laughs> right on this map. Let me call it map just to make my code more readable. Okay, and now what is this code doing? <laughs> well, you need to reverse engineer your own application to understand that. The, the biggest problem with application is the readability of your code. And if you're using just this kind of code, well, readability is close to zero, right? Who, who would give a one out of 10 to this readability instead of zero? Yeah, no one. <laughs> Okay, uh, and you, you have so if you, you can at least try to make an effort by calling these with with this kind of uh, you see try to make uh, try to make your code more readable by by giving your variable meaningful names, but it's not that great because what you're manipulating is a map entry of string which should be really a state, an integer which should which should really be your population. All right. Well, now with records. You can give meaningful names not only to your variables but also to your types, which is much much better. That's the next step, I would say. So let me take this state for instance. This is this is really a state. Okay. I don't want to run you. Okay. So I'm just going to create a record, call it state, give it a name. Okay. And that's it. I just created my record took me a good 10 seconds. And instead of having a, a state here that is a, that is a string, I'm, I'm going to say this is, this is really a state there. So I'm going to, I'm to paste you there. OK, I need to fix this code a little, because now this is a bit of state. And this is a map of state and integer. And this is a map entry of state and integer. And you see, on, on this pattern, now I know that this is a list of state. My code becomes much easier to understand. If you leave this code for two weeks and you come back, you will see that it's, it's a list of state because it's just written. Okay? I can do the same for the population because this integer here is in fact a population. So I'm going to, to do the same. Population is a little more tricky. I'm going to show you why. Population, and I'm going to say, okay, this is just an integer amount, all right? So this population here should really be a population object. And I'm going to copy this there just to make it a population object. I probably need to refactor this code, but you, you can see that for the moment it just me took me a few seconds to do that. Now it's not working because this summing int here is uh, taking a parameter there that should really be an integer, and that should really be something that I can sum up, OK? Uh, if, I, if I expand this uh, method reference there, it's really a city. Uh, from that city, I cannot get the, the, the amount directly. I need to get through oh, city, please, to get through the population first, OK, and then go through the amount. Yes, this one, OK, which is not great. Yeah, I didn't improve the, the readability of this code. But what I could do is say, oh, but I can create an instance method on this city object. OK, let me call it amount, that's fine. And return this dot population dot amount. Because I can create any kind of instance method on the record. This is legal. And the same for static method, by the way. Now, this is a method reference again. So let me put it here. But what I would like to do, really, is also have a population there, something like that. OK? And I don't have it because the mount is returning, um, is returning an integer. And if I want to sum integer, uh, well, I can sum integer. I cannot sum populations, really. But what I can do is use another collector, collectors. It's called, I think it's called collecting and then. Yes, that's the one. And once I have collected, uh, all these integers, I can pass, I can wrap the result in a population just by calling this. Let me indent this code. And now I have a map of state and population. OK? Now, this, this collector is a little hairy, a little geeky. Can you put it in that way? But what I can do is hide it, use just simple clean code principle. That is, when you have something ugly and you don't want to see it, or you don't want to show it, you need to hide it, and to hide it in a method. So I'm just going to do that. 
Okay, let me call it get downstream, and we'll think about giving it a proper name after that. It's not an object there, it's really a question mark. Okay, and I can move this method. I'm going to take this method, because I don't want to put it there, get rid of this. Maybe the right place to put it would be the population record there. Okay, let me make it public. I don't think I need to make it public, but let me do that. Okay, so my ugly collector is there. It's here. Okay, and instead of calling it get downstream, maybe what I can call it is uh, swimming. Okay, so my, now my pattern is much more readable, I think. I'm just grouping the city by state, and I'm just summing the population. This is what my code is telling me, and this is what it's doing. So now I'm much happier. Now, I have a problem is here. The, this map entry is not a map entry of state and integers, a map entry of state of population. So it's a pair of state and population. I could make it a record, okay? But my main problem here is that here I have a comparing by value, and this comparing by value is, is working with the value that is a population object, and this population object is not comparable. But, hey, you can implement any interface with uh, records, so I'm going to implement comparable. All right, yeah, compare to, please, thank you. I'm going to call this one other, okay? And all I need to do is compare um, the amount of this population and other dot population. amount, sorry. Okay. And this code now is, has been refactored. It's running properly. The result is the same, of course. Okay. But you can see that I have improved the readability by giving uh, meaningful names, not only to the variables, but also to the types of the, of the, um, of the elements that I'm uh, manipulating, thanks to record. Why didn't we do that earlier, right? Like in Java 8? Well, because in Java 8, state and population would have been classes. And to create a class on the, on the stuff, you need to write like 50 lines of, of technical code, boilerplate code. And now it's not the case anymore with records. With records, you can really wrap your, your uh, technical objects into meaningful business objects, and thus improve the quality of your code very easily and for a very cheap price. These records are not exposed, right? They are just within. The, the, the class that I created, and I don't plan to expose them. They are just here to improve the readability of the code. Now, you may be wondering, oh, yes, but what about performances? Wrapping this stuff must, must be a big performance hit. Okay, now think about it. If your code is doing some kind of SQL queries, SQL transactions, whatever, you are spending milliseconds in doing that, if not probably more hundreds of milliseconds in doing that. And here we are just... We have just in-memory computations, so in the, end, in the order of 100 of nanoseconds. So there is a factor of 1 million between the execution of this code and the execution of a code that will go and fetch some data on some network or database or whatever. So most of the time, this kind of performances is really no, not a big deal. It's not a problem at all. So you should really favor uh, the cleanness of your code, the readability of your code over the, your performances. Great. And that's it for records. Okay. 20. How much time do we have left? 20. 20 minutes? No, because they, they, they took five minutes at the beginning. So you get, I'm taking them back. <laughs> <laughs> let us talk about pattern matching. Okay. I don't have much time, apparently, so let me move that. This is a shape interface. Okay. And this shape interface has several implementations, so called rectangle and square, right? Very classical example. You know what? I'm going to get rid of the rectangle because the re rectangle is too complex. Rectangle is a complex object. People think rectangle extends square or the contrary, and it's not the case. I don't want to deal with that. Okay, let's go back to shape. And suppose you are in a business application. This is your business object model, and you want to add some behavior uh, to, to, your, to your application. You want to compute the surface of these shapes. Your first reflex would be probably this one. Okay, in surface, and then what the compiler is telling you, 
you have so-called that is not compiling anymore, and the same for square. Why? Because there is no implementation of this surface method in that. Doing that is really great because you cannot forget to implement this method nowhere in your application because the compiler tells you when you can't do it, which is a, a safety. It's, it's, it's great to have this feature. This is what you want. But what is the price of doing this kind of thing? Well, if every time you have um, one more behavior to add to your application, and the reflex is to add one more method in an interface or in several interfaces, okay, at the end of the day, you will have 50 methods in your interface implemented by all your objects. And I ask yourself the question, what is the last time I removed a method from one interface in my application? Maybe in five years from now, this method will still be there, but you will not have any more business needs to compute surfaces of shapes. This code will become dead code. Why? Because adding code like that within your model object is a code, the, the code you add is a code that will be extremely hard, if not impossible, to remove. And a code that you add and you cannot remove will become dead code at one point or another. Okay? Just ask yourself, what is the amount of dead code we have in our application? Is it 40%, 50 60 more? Maybe more. <laughs> so that. So this, this way of doing that, on the one hand, is really great because you have this safety. You cannot forget to implement anything there. Okay? But on the other hand, you have a problem because at some point, it will become dead code. So let us explore other ways of doing that. I think I have, yes, this this method there. I'm going to, the other way would be, okay, now I'm in my business module that really needs to compute this surface, and I'm going to, to implement this surface method, okay? And I'm going to take a shape as a parameter. Is it the right shape that I took? Yes, it is. Great. And now what I can do, because I have two shapes, that, that's the interface. I have two implementing classes, and the rule to implement this, this, this business rule is not the same for square and, uh, and circle, right? The, the, so I need to do, okay, if shape is an instance of circle, okay, curly brace, then I want to return. Oh, I need to, uh, I, I need to, can't you? Shape dot radius. Okay, the surface of the circle is the square of the radius. Can we agree on that? Oh, I need to multiply by pi. Yes, but I can say that pi equals two to make my code easier to understand. Okay, and if shape is an instance of square, then I can return shape dot edge times shape dot edge. My ID is, is kind enough to do the, and, and then if it's not the case, I return zero. I, can, I cannot even write a, a, test, a unit test to execute this return dot zero, but I need to put it because it's, it's an if, else if, else if, and there is one way that is out of this method that doesn't go through any, any kind of thing, so I need to add that for the compiler to be happy. Okay, what do you think of this code? Zero or one on, a <laughs> on any kind of rule? <laughs> it's ugly code, right? We all agree on that. Yeah, okay. We, uh, we, we hate instance of, don't we? Who likes instance of? Yeah, no one. It's great for demos. Sorry? It's great for demos. Oh, yes, it's great for demos. I think you will love instance of in the next 20 minutes. I said it, I said it, okay? Well, the first thing we, we can do to improve this code is to say, okay, but this is a circle. And this square is a square, okay? And I'm going to say, okay, but this is a circle, this is a circle, and this is a square, this is a square. It makes the code a little less ugly. Previously, I could only, I could only, sorry, oh yes, yeah, one more there, thank you. Previously, I, I, I could only put types after instance of. It's a circle. Okay, that's a circle. Okay, I could only put types after instance of. Now I can put something that is not really a type. It's a type plus the declaration of a variable. 
And these two stuff, circle, circle, and square, square, you could, you could see that as just syntactic sugar, and, and it would work. Nice thing to have. But it's much more than that. It's a new concept within the language, which is called precisely pattern matching. Because what I'm really asking is, does shape matches the pattern circle, circle? OK? Is shape a variable that could have been declared with circle, circle, or square, square? So this stuff is a pattern. An instance of can work with a pattern. OK, we're going to put patterns everywhere in the language, so you'd better be aware of that. Right? And this circle variable is a binding variable for this pattern. And I, can, and, and I can have more than one binding variable in a pattern. We are going to see examples of that. But I still didn't fix my problem. And my main problem was, if I want to add a rectangle, for instance, this code will still compile. And now I'm in trouble, because I lost the security I had with interfaces, where if you add one implementation of an interface and you forget to implement the surface method in that implementation, so the compiler will help you will tell you you forgot one implementation. Well, this if, else if, else if, else if has the structure of a switch, right? So we could write it with a switch. Who likes switch? Ah, we have more people that like switch than, than people that like instance of. Well, that's great. So now switch in 17 are expressions. So I can return switch just like that. Previously, switch was some kind of weird stuff. Now it's an expression, so it's better. And what I can do with switch is add patterns to switches. OK. Circle, circle. Could I have it with the square? Oh, yes, you can. Right. Previously, I'm going to get rid of this and say that by default, I should return zero. Now, why aren't you compiling? Oh, because that's a preview feature. Can you accept preview features? Yes, you can. Great. So I have activated preview features. Preview features are great. Okay? You don't need to download some kind of separate stuff to get them. If you have a regular JDK, the preview features are in it. But you cannot use them by accident. So you cannot use preview feature in your production code, something that you want probably to, go, to stay away from, because you, you, you need to activate them uh, uh, explicitly. At right. compile time and at runtime. At compile time and at runtime. All right? So now this is a switch expression. It may return a value. I have this new arrow-like, lambda expression-like syntax there to use it, which is really nice. I do not have this great fall-through behavior anymore which is also a great idea, I think. All right? And I can put patterns in a switch. OK? This is a switch pattern. And this is awesome to have that. Right? But I still have this default stuff. I'm still losing the security I had with interfaces and implementation and compiler error. If I had a rectangle, the, the surface of my rectangle will be 0. And I won't, don't want that. But I have another feature that I'm going to activate which is the concept of sealed types. A sealed type could be a class, abstract class on interface. I'm going to show them to you, to show that to you with, uh, with interfaces. And uh, a sealed type is a type that knows its implementation. OK? So it's going to be circle and square. Now, my code is compiling because Circle already implements shape. But if I try, for instance, to go to rectangle, OK, and say, hey, you should be implementing shape, well, I have a compiler error there because rectangle is not allowed in the C hierarchy. And I also have a compiler error on the shape side telling me, hey, you have a rectangle that, that is asking to implement you and you don't allow it. So I'm going to. Uh, remove this code for the moment. OK? And now if I go back to this stuff, now I have a sealed type. OK? So the compiler knows that a shape can only be a circle or a square. And you can see that this default now is grayed out because it can see that this branch is not necessary anymore. I can get rid of it. 
okay? And if I go back to this stuff and say, oh, but you should really be implementing shape, and I'm going to tell the shape that you are allowed to implement it, now my code is compiling, but now my switch, let me go back to this switch, now this switch is not compiling because I forgot a branch, okay? So you are getting back the security given by interfaces with the switch on sealed types. Switch expressions plus pattern matching plus sealed types are really meant to work together. Okay, so this is the width. <coughs> this is the height, and this is the width. Okay. So now you have, I mean, you have the best of both worlds. You have the security that used to be given only by interfaces and implementations, and the fact that you do not need to put your business code within your object model anymore. You can put it outside of it, and then if you do not need to compute surfaces anymore, it will be much easier to get rid of this class and this method. Okay? I think we still have the time to show more, pattern, more about pattern matching, do we? Two minutes. Ten. Ten. Sold. <laughs> you saw, you saw that? <laughs> we have witness. We ha we have two minutes. No, no. Ten. We have eight minutes. Ten. We have eight minutes plus the five you took at the beginning. <laughs> That's thirty minutes. I don't need more than thirty minutes. Okay, so I'm going to directly go. The next pattern matching that we will have, and it will be a preview feature in 19 is called record pattern matching, okay? And instead, basically, instead of writing this code, which is, um, oh, I should have, yeah. Instead of writing this code, I have a record, user name, user age, I will be able to write this one. Because we know that a record is built on components, right? Components are really a new notion in the language. You can find reference to components in the reflection API and also in the, um, annotation uh, stuff, okay? So now you can write instance of user, which is a record built on name and age, and you can also get a reference to, the, to the, your user record if you want that. This is a preview feature of 19, so we will have in a, in a few months now as a preview feature. And you see that this is a pattern with three binding variables. I told you that you could have more than one binding variables in the, in the stuff. We will have also pattern matching for switch, so I just showed that to you. I'm going to switch that to, to uh, okay. This is basically the code we wrote, but it will you you will be able you will be able to okay. This is the one I wanted to show you. You will be able to write this kind of code where you mix record pattern matching and pattern matching for switch. So instead of writing the code that we wrote, where you would call the accessors of the, of your record, you can directly deconstruct this stuff and be able to, um, to play with the, the edge uh, for the square on the circle. It should, it should be rectangle and not square. Okay, so, so we are mixing both pattern matching. The next step, not necessarily in that, in that order, would be array pattern matching, where you can deconstruct an array. So that's the kind of code that you could be writing. I mean, you can write this code right now. You see that you can use the binding variable array within the Boolean expression, because it makes sense to use it there. Okay, but with array pattern matching, you'll be able to say, oh, but this array has been built on S1 and S2, and then S1 and S2 become um, binding variables of your pattern, so you can use them directly. And if it's an array of circle, well, you can mix them both, deconstruct your record and put them in the array. It is still an instance of, right? I told you, you're going to love instance of. <laughs> I didn't believe me, but... You will, trust me. Okay, and if you, if you have an array that is created on a point, and a radius on the point is itself a record, well, you can write this kind of code. I think that you can very easily write completely unreadable code with this kind of pattern, so you should not go too far, or unless you want to go too far, you can do it. And you see there is also this underscore there. It's the, I don't care about this variable pattern. Okay, so if you don't need the radius, if you just need the center of the point, you can say, okay, I don't need the radius, and this is how you're going to, to do that. What lies in the future with pattern matching? So array pattern matching is in the future. Nested pattern, deconstruction using instance and factory methods. So let me show that to you. 
Okay. Um, where are you? You're there. So this I already showed you. Okay. So th th this one is, uh, is part of the syntactic sugar that we'll, we'll, we may have in the future. It's not sure, but we may have that. This is a basic for each loop on the list of points. But these points are record. So what about writing this in that way? Okay. That's a pattern. So you're just deconstructing the points. And you can now play with x and y, which are just uh, binding variables of these records. Okay. If you create your, your object with factory methods, then being able to deconstruct them using this factory method should also be great. So have a switch expression in that way. Shape has been called with circle, edge, and now radius and edge becomes uh, binding variables of these patterns. And this is a pattern built out of a factory method. All right. If you can do that, then it will be, it will, you'll be able to do this kind of thing. And there is a double check there because max cannot be null. You cannot call optional dot off with a null variable, so it will do do this checking for you automatically. You will execute the if branch only if max is not null, and max is a binding variable. You have the guarantee that it's not null. But you could also use it with a string format. Wouldn't it be cool to be able to use that? <laughs> Who's up to write the regular expression to extract this stuff? <laughs> Relax regular expressions? Oh, two or three people. Yeah, great. But if you, if you want to deconstruct maps, because you, you could also have this kind of thing with maps, and now this is a deconstructor of map, OK? And you, you check if there is a key that is called name, if there is a key that is called email. And if that's the case, then you want to deconstruct the map and extract the, 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 the value bound to the name a key and the value bound to the email key. This is two patterns, so you are going to execute this if only if both are true. But it's also an, an and, a, a, a Boolean and. This and there is a Boolean and. But maybe in the future we'll have an operator. Certainly will not be called and. You just create Boolean expression and Boolean expression between patterns themselves. Okay, so, that, so that's one instance of with one pattern, which is the result of the uh, Boolean operation between two patterns. All right. And if we are able to do that, well, this is the JSON file. Okay. To deconstruct a JSON file and to analyze it, you can just have write one instance of, which would look like this one. That's just one instance of. Okay. I told you. <laughs> okay. And if one day in the future we have map literals, for, uh, for Java, which is something that has been present in C-sharp, for instance, for years, okay, then it could also be used as a pattern and write this kind of thing, map instance of. You see, it's the same kind of structure of code, and these are binding variables. All right. What about classes that are not records, where you could create the constructor? Okay, the output is, in fact, what looks like the arguments. And because you still need to be able to do some defensive copies, you can write the code you need to deconstruct this point. So that would be a new concept added to regular classes. Okay, deconstructor is not, it's just there to show you that it's a deconstructor, but it's not going to be the syntax. Okay, and if you're able to do that, then you can deconstruct really any kind of object. And you can write your own patterns, so the patterns you're going to need in your application, you can, you'll be able to write them. Okay. I have minus one minute, so let me continue. <laughs> OK, what about uh, adding patterns to um, variable assignments with a match or let? OK, so let circle this be a circle. So if, if it's not the case, you can do whatever you need. It's some kind of a if, but also uh, an assignment. So it's a little something, something that doesn't exist in the language yet. And the center and, and radius are also going to be um, binding variables. We put uh, an end there. Or you could write this kind of thing also, if a uh, rectangle is a record and point is a record. Or you could nest pattern. You can do the, the, your imagination is really the limit. OK. So where are we as far with patterns? OK. So pattern matching, for instance, is a, is a regular feature. 
uh, of, uh, of the JDK uh, 16, in fact, but you're not going to use that, you're going to use 17, so that's the one. Pattern matching for switch, uh, we will have a third preview uh, in 19. It has been in preview since uh, 17. Record pattern matching, the first preview is in 19, and all the rest is for the future. Maybe, uh, maybe science fiction, maybe something uh, that we'll have. Uh, and also, let's not forget that if you are on 17, you have records, you have sealed types, yeah. you have pattern matching, for instance, off, and switch expression, fully specified, fully part of the platform. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we have uh, four minutes for questions. Yes, the guy is saying yes. So we have still have some time to question for questions. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, so the, the question is about the next long-term support version. So the next LTS will be 21. Okay, that's in uh, 15 months. Okay, the next September is the 19, so it's one year after after next September. Yeah, so the next LTS is very close, in fact, less than a year and a half. Meaning that there are probably things that will go as final features. So if you're planning to move to 17 and you're planning to move that in two years, Maybe you should target 21 instead of 17 and get all these new and shiny features that we, I, we just showed you. Okay? Yeah, question? Can, can you repeat? I'm sorry, we can't. We can't. Oh, what is the difference between. A let and var. Var is just a declaration of a variable that you can use now in, in any method. It's only for local variables. And the compiler will, will guess the type of the variable you're using. Okay, so it has nothing to do with pattern matching. If you use let, which is something that is not specified, people are just talking about it, so it, it may change like 10 times before it, make it makes it to the JDK. But let will really let you use a pattern and assign a variable to a pattern, and if there is no match because the, 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 the variable does not match the pattern you put, then you will be able to have a else stuff and uh, do some kind of other stuff if you need. I can show you the, the, the slide again if you want. Where is it? There. Okay. Let, let and match is kind of the same concept. But here what you're doing is you're assigning so-called to, to this stuff to the left, which is a pattern, not really signing, you are matching really this pattern to the variable. And if it matches, then you will uh, create the two binding variable center and radius. And if it doesn't, you execute the else branch. That's, that's the gist of this syntax. Okay, I think we're good now. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, well, thank you. Thank you. Come to us for the last question. Thank you.